action. Every working class man, if we were to stand up, if 10 million men were to stand up and march against child support, we could abolish child support in America. Being a man is a political issue. Every other group has some type of legislative protection, but men do not. And so as men, as soon as men stand up and say, hey, I'm a man, you're going to respect my masculinity. And not only am I espousing this rhetoric, I'm willing to stand for it, defend it and protect it. Then all of a sudden, what, when men, when strong men stand up, all nonsense just sits down. I, I think I have something that might be controversial, too. Go ahead, Rocky, bro. All men, white men, even if you don't like black men, black men, even if you don't like white men. Asian men, all men that are United States citizens that have to get up every day, pay taxes and work, need to come together and address this as an issue as a whole. Because I'm going to tell you something, white man, you have all the right in the world to not like me. We have the right to not like each other. But when we come together and make sure that we can have basic human rights and understand what's actually going against us as men, I think a lot of things will change in this country as a whole. Like when you say men, because guess what? No matter whether you're Asian man, white man, whatever man, if you're a head of household as a man and you're running a family, you are under siege. You are under attack. You are under attack right now. I have feelings, okay? I, I have feelings, but my feelings don't dictate my behavior. My duty and responsibility dictates my behavior. And with with female driven with female driven media, with social media, we are so exposed to these ideas that you hurt my feelings. You can't say that. You can't do that. It's completely destroying the fabric of our democracy because we have to engage and debate. Whether it's social debate, political debate, we have to have honest conversations. If I disagree with you, you have to support your position. You can't just say, you can't agree with me. I'm a black woman. You can't disagree with me. I'm a gay man. You have to support me. Hey, listen, I'm a man, man. You have to listen to me. You have to support me. Because if you don't, I challenge you to thumb war. <laughs> I challenge you to thumb war. That is the least physical thing that you can possibly do. Beat me a thumb war and we can have a conversation if your ideas are valid. If you think that's silly, it's as silly as you saying that I'm just supposed to respect you based on your identity. I'm a man. Respect me based on my identity. What's up? How about that? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous where we've come uh, in this country to where you can just say something and expect something. I can just say it and expect it. And that's very that's based in a lot of feminist centric uh, ideas. It, it really is. I mean, women. Hey, I'm just going to say it. I'm I, I don't I don't got no filter right Let's now. Rock. Women think that that's what women think. Yeah, women they we, do. It, it's based in, in, in how they feel and believe um, the world should run. And it's uh, if you've ever dealt with a woman or lived with her for a long period of time, I don't know, had a wife, you can see how delusional they can be at times. I just had an interaction with my ex-wife and it was it was such a tense situation because she started to try to belittle me. And I started laughing at her like, I don't take you seriously because you can't do anything to me. You're not threatening. And because I laugh, she started pointing in my face, pointing in my face. And so, man, I started, I started to talk to her in a very aggressive tone. And then she was like, you can't talk to me like that. No real man would ever talk to me like that. No real woman would ever approach any man in any aggressive way because you cannot defend the thing that you're doing. No real respectful person would ever violate another person's personal space by thumping them in their face with their finger. But we have, uh, women have taken chivalry and acted like it's uh, a God-given right. They have inherited my masculinity and I'm only supposed to listen to you and shut up. Do what you ask me to do and sit down. Man, the times of that stuff is over with. And I'm requesting that men stand up and, and say, no, I'm not going to succumb to your feelings. I'm not going to sit back and bow to you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I do what you want me to do, ma'am. Hell no, I'm going to stand up, stand tall. I'm going to hold my nuts and I'm going to stand on it. I said it. I meant it. And if you don't like it, do something. We got a civil war, though, amongst men. That's the only issue. We got the simps versus the real men it's like every time you try you know one thing is like uh r.i.p hey, to hey what what uh what did jesse lee peterson say 
Beta. <laughs> Jesse Lee Peterson. Beta. Um, R.I.P. to Sinful to P, man. You know, uh, regardless of what people may have thought about the brother's past and what he was doing, I did tune into his channel and I would listen to things that he said uh, because at the end of the day, it's not about the messenger. It is the message. What is the message overall saying? And sometimes the message has more value and righteousness than the messenger. Um one thing about a, about a lot of men is we're just afraid to hold a bitch accountable. Like, holding a bitch accountable is like, you know what I'm saying, a uh, uh, motherfucking w with Superman kryptonite. It's like <laughs> men don't want to hold women accountable. So when you got these simps that are simping for sexual attention because it is a hierarchy of need it's a maslow's hierarchy of needs yes, yes, yes. um you know they'll do anything they'll go against their um you know righteousness or uh great intentions of idea just for some cootie cat and that's one of our biggest problems that we are facing super simp number one President Barack Obama. Man. Hey, look, you Man. said you said the message matters. We got black people got so mad at Donald Trump because Donald Trump said, Hey, y'all letting this African come over here and, and have and have a message for you. He doesn't even represent your ideology. But President Barack Obama does not align himself with American black men. He doesn't have to because he's not an American black man. And so we got mad at Donald Trump for saying that. But I call President Barack Obama super simp number one. He was having a conference for men as he was promoting this, my brother's keeper rhetoric. He was talking to Steph Curry, and he introduced himself. Yeah, hi. Y'all know who I am. I'm Michelle's husband. Ha, 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 ha. And you're telling a whole bunch of men they're supposed to acquiesce to their wife. You could be in the most powerful position in the, in the world, and you're supposed to say, without, without my wife, I wouldn't be who I am. Yeah, man. No, um. no other group of men do that. Well, when we're talking specifically about black men, black men as a whole, I said this, we're some of the biggest cowards uh, because it's very difficult for black men to be men because we haven't really sought it out. We, we're not seeking to be better men because we have drinking, we've drank the Kool-Aid and kept the Kool-Aid in the fridge. And really, that's because of many, many black men have been raised by in single parent households by the single strong black woman. So black men act just like that at the end of the day. So you we always look. Uh, uh, Tommy Sotomayor used to say this, you know, uh, we got like mama, you know, I love like we have mama carols and stuff like that. Like we don't have reverence for black. Men. Super simp number two, Tupac Shakur. He promoted simp <laughs> ideology to destroy black men. He, even as a crack fiend, mama always was a black queen. Mama LeBron James, super simp number three. He's letting his teammates pop his mama. Like, we have to have some accountability yeah. and some authority to stand up and say, you're not going to promote this deviant-ass behavior. Go sit your little fast ass down somewhere. Real men is talking right now. So, I, I, I got a, I have a video about Tupac where I'm calling him <laughs> Cat. Now, I got a lot of, I got, Tupac, for the record, Tupac is my favorite rapper. I mean, I have, like, a ranking system. He's not, like, as far as, like, overall rapper, like, I have Jay-Z, but, like, he's my favorite. I have a painting of Tupac in my house that cost a pretty penny. Kanye to the West. Go ahead. Ka Kanye West is, you know, again, we can love the artist, but if we separate the man from the artist, I have to agree. Because Afeni, uh, like you say, even though you were a crack fiend, you still was a black queen. Also, she kept him from his father, one of his actual biological father, told him he was dead. Um, uh, we really give women a pass on their behavior. We, again, we're afraid to hold them up a, a bitch accountable. We give them a pass on their behavior and we kind of romanticize when they mess up. Like, oh, I, I didn't know, uh, that I was out here having sex without you. And I had a baby. This ain't, please forgive me. Please take me back. Like we romanticize their failures instead of ridiculing them. I'm going to say this and I'm going to pass the mic to you. Good morning, cause, morning. cause, cause me, um, my wife and I had this this conversation uh, today. Um, we had a little disagreement, but we were talking about the Sukiyani thing. And I said, hey. What, I'll, what she do? What she do? I, I'll talk. Well, YK Osiris, uh, he goes and aggressively kiss her and put his hands on her, which I'm not with that. Like rape, all that, oh, aggressively putting yourself on a woman, that's that was, lame. That wasn't his woman? That wasn't his woman. Okay. okay. But I'm going to say this. So it was sexual assault. It was sexual assault. Okay. We not with that. We not doing no sexual assault. Yeah, yeah. But we must we must look at it all as a whole. Put your clothes on. Women out here, you talking about eating booty, 
you uh you ain't got no no bra on. You out here looking provocative. There was a professor that talked about how when women wear scantily clad clothing, it has an effect on a man's brain. The same brain, the part of our brain where we use tools becomes uh, widely aroused when we see women in scantily clad clo- clothing. How, how can you dress sexually and provocatively and ask me not to um, admire your sexuality? Like, I see a beautiful woman wearing no clothes, and I'm like, geez, I had to. I used to have to pay $14.95 for a subscription to see the Cuda Cat on the street, and they just come down here with the most tightest clothes on, with no bra on, and I'm supposed to be like, I don't see those pretty titties. You can get on Twitter and watch <laughs> porn for free. And I'm talking about some of the best porn ever. Hardcore. We thumping. are a pervert, perverted nation. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So at the end of the day, women who dress like this, you still want me to respect you as a wife. Wife, Wives don't wear clothes like that. Wives don't don't wear scantily clad clothing and Aisha Curry and almost want to pull off your ring because you see somebody attractive. Wives don't behave in that manner. And women don't want to be chastened in this way because many of them are not wives there are more whores than wives they don't want to be wives look they have got they've like we're having the conversation they, they have gotten uh financial equality in this system and they've gotten social equality but they don't want any financial or social responsibility instead of raising a family they want to go buy a bag and a car and live in a condo and say girl i'm getting it on i'm going to brunch i'm gonna go have some mimosas I even know single moms who completely neglect their children so they can go out and party. And they, they 30-something years old saying, Mama got to have a life too. Hell yeah. Your life is the duty and responsibility and the upkeep of your household in which you created. But now you got three baby daddies, two baby daddies, and you ain't got no head. And so you just out there just aimless. And that's destroying our entire society and you can't say nothing about it. You can't say nothing about it. I ain't going to lie. We got so much fire on this episode. I'm eager to see uh, what the responses would be. And I like looking in the comments to see how people are perceiving this information. But I'm going to tell you something. No matter whether you agree with us or not, we ain't saying nothing wrong. We ain't saying nothing wrong. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.